So today is July 15th, 2020, and here we have Mr. Alvin G for the Houston Asian American Archives special COVID-19 project. Welcome, Mr. G. Hi. For agreeing to do this interview with us. Uh, so to start off, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Alvin G, and I was born and raised here in Houston. My parents are originally from Canton, China. So, uh, and my wife is also born here in Houston. I have two adult children and they're both married. And I'm a practicing professional photographer as my profession. Okay, great. So I guess my first question is that in what ways has the coronavirus pandemic impacted you and your life? Uh, Business-wise, everything has been, uh, well, when we first heard about the uh, coronavirus, you know, we were asked to stay home. So I did stay home for five weeks and, uh, and uh, everything was fine and everything, thank you, and everything uh, worked out well. Um, things, uh, my wife works at uh, Chevron and so she's been working from home and uh, she's very comfortable telecommuting from, uh, from the house. Uh, I just kind of got a little stir crazy at home because um, I, I like to work and uh, it's, it's, it's hard to do what I do from home. I, I need to be here at my office. Okay, so were there any activities that you engage in more or that you engage in less than before? Um, you know, uh, it, 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 what was kind of disappointing, but everything has kind of evolved. Um, you, you know, some of the things that I, I do outside of work is, is go to church. And uh, I, I attend First Baptist Church. And so um, the church pivoted very easily and they, uh, their church services are on Zoom, so we uh, are able to watch uh, church services there, and uh, and and so that has um, been kind of difficult, uh, but uh, it's 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 nice that with the Zoom we're able to to still uh, worship corporately, individually, but corporately. Uh, I belong to the uh, Professional Photographers of, of America, and they have, we, we meet uh, locally on a monthly basis, and we've also converted our meetings that we usually meet face-to-face -to, -face to, uh, to a Zoom call, so that's worked out well. Um, we're, we opened up our offices about three weeks ago, and uh, we've taken all of the CDC procedures. We, we typically uh, wear gloves, a mask, we take the person's temperature, and then we proceed as, as we would normally do. We social distance. Everything is by appointment only. So uh, for the most part, it's, it, it's there are challenges. Um, uh, but uh, you know we've we've overcome those challenges. Can you talk more specifically about the challenges you are dealing with? Okay, um, I did not real I did not realize um, one of the very last photo sessions that I did before we had the uh, the, the the COVID uh, procedures. Uh, I did not realize how much I touch people. It, you know when I'm photographing them like a business portrait, you know, I'll adjust the necktie, I'll make sure it's snug. I'll make sure that there's no wrinkles in the shirt, that the jacket is fitting properly. And, uh, and then a lot of times, sometimes I physically, you know, touch the head to have them tip the head a certain way. And, and I, I can't do that now. So to overcome that challenge, I, I typically, even before COVID, I, I typically have a mirror right next to a, a full length mirror right next to the camera. And so I normally will tell the client you can, if, if they can see themselves so that if I do ask them to uh, 
uh, a straightener necktie or something like that, they'll be able to immediately see what, what, uh, what's wrong and then we'll, we'll fix it. Normally, um, and like I shared with you, there's just little things that, that we like to do to make sure that the details are uh, taken care of before we actually capture the image. Um, so other than, uh, other than that, er everything is, 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 is just fine. Typically, we, we space our clients out a little bit further, you know, usually uh, uh, so that we can clean up between and sanitize between photo sessions. But uh, that, that seems to work out very well. Okay. That's great. And do you think there is an increase in demand for your photo sessions or there is like a decrease? Is um, uh, it, it's nice. Uh, Kelly, is that right? Yeah. Uh, normally, you know, there's uh, uh, people need business portraits, you know, in good times and then in these COVID times. So it's nice that we still have a steady stream of business um, in business portraits. You know, we, we specialize in photographing people. And so when, so when we photograph people, uh, that, that includes little children, families, business portraits of men and women. Uh, we haven't done that many family portraits, mainly because uh, we just, I guess it's just the, the, the need right now. You know, our business, when it comes to family portraits, it's kind of seasonal. Uh, usually the last quarter of the year, you know, during holiday time, people get together. Uh, for Thanksgiving and holidays and things. So that's when we do a lot of, uh, of, of those kinds of things. Business portraits, on the other hand, we do pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty regularly. Uh, typically, we would photograph a lot of high school senior portraits. We didn't do this that many high school senior portraits, but we did do some. And uh, it was kind of disappointing in knowing that, you know, their graduation exercises were some were postponed some were completely canceled some of the activities that they did so you know my heart kind of goes out to those senior high school seniors that graduated this year yeah. so in terms of business hours uh, do you still normal or do is it a change oh okay uh, normally we're uh, our office hours were open nine to five Monday through Friday and uh, we take appointments on, on Saturday mornings by appointment only. So uh, things really haven't changed that much in regards to our, uh, our, uh, our time. Um, portrait studios kind of fell in the category of non-essential businesses. You know, it's not like we were like Home Depot, you know, that, that's, that was, that their business was not affected, but Ours, we were affected in that we were considered a non-essential business. So we had to wait for the governor to say, okay, it's time, you, it's okay for you all to open up. So we were, um, so we had to kind of patiently wait. Uh, we didn't, we had to turn down business uh, because we, we were, we were afforded the luxury to, uh, to open up the business at that time or go out on location at that time. We just ceased doing business. Mm -hmm. So how has that affected like individual employees or even you? I don't know. Um, I have a full-time office manager and she's terrific. You know, during those times, she was still able to uh, commute, a telecommute and, and do things that were necessary prior to the shutdown. And so she was able to work uh, from home, from her computers. And so that worked out pretty well. And um, me personally, as an employer, I wanna make sure that her comfort level is, um, it is, is high uh, working because, uh, you know, some people just, even right now, prefer not to go out. They just want to, uh, lockdown and stay put 
And I really appreciate her, you know, having this comfort level too of what we've done to make sure that things are safe here. Mm -hmm. And we've had everything we possibly can do to, you know, to make it safe. Yeah, definitely. And that's good to hear. So I guess the next question is, you mentioned that some of your work and social experiences have been conducted via digital communication like Zoom. I'm wondering like, how do that compare to in-person experiences? Uh, you know, uh, when we, uh, when we typically photograph a, a family group, normally what we do is we have a consultation, uh, a face-to-face -face consultation. And those are very important because uh, I'm able to ask questions, find out exactly what the client needs, and then, and then create the portrait for the client. Uh, we always want the portrait experience to be a very positive one. Um, my clients that I've Kind of like when we 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 were uh, we had scheduled this high school senior portrait uh, person to come in, and the COVID nineteen occurred. The mother is a physician, so she said, "I really don't want my daughter to come in." So we waited until our business could open, uh, and and because she's a former client, it, we didn't need to have the face to face consultation. We just talked over the phone find that she needed her letter jacket to be worn, that she was going to wear a formal dress, and then she was going to wear, uh, you know, something more casual too. So having the, 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 the phone consultation seemed to work out well. But I typically like to have a face-to-face -face consultation. Uh, at that particular time, the client will talk to me about what their needs are. He or she typically will bring their cell phone, and, and I'll ask if they can just show me some pictures of the children. And that helps me kind of get an idea of how old they are. I kind of, so what I do is I have a, I have a consultation sheet. I get the names, I get the ages, so that we're able to work very quickly and efficiently um, when we're photographing the, the family. Mm -hmm. And what about your church experiences, like having the meetings online? Uh, you know, um, the church experiences have been fine, uh, it, it, but you, you know, it's 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 very nice to corporately worship together. Uh, but um, but but the pastor still has the opportunity to get his message. Uh, we're we're still able to uh, sing songs and uh, pray together, and then uh, we also. Uh, you know, the, we're, we're still able to tithe also. And, and we, we've been very easy tithe by sending in a check, uh, you know, um, uh, putting credit cards online. So, you know, that, that's a, a nice way to, to support the church. Okay, great. And have you experienced any stress or anxiety during this period? Yes, yes. Um, you know, We've had, uh, I, I'm not a wedding photographer, but there's a, a lot of wedding photographers because uh, the, the weddings have been postponed from the summertime to maybe possibly the fall or later. Um, you know, they, they, they lost business. Uh, we typically photograph uh, uh, some continuing ed education classes that are taught uh, and they're, they're usually week-long classes, they're engineers, and we, um, the, they've, they've canceled those, those, those continuing education studies, uh, you know, because of this, um, that's been canceled. Uh, every year, we would photograph the Miss Chinatown Houston contest, and this is where young ladies uh, compete for the title of Miss Chinatown Houston, you know, with uh, uh, their talents, and then they go to the Miss Chinatown USA pageant in San Francisco, and they compete there. Well, this year was the 50th anniversary, and it had to be canceled um, because of, of, of this um, outbreak. And so uh, they're postponing this year's 
uh, competition to next year. You know, that's when they'll celebrate their 50th anniversary. It's a very wonderful, large uh, social event. And, uh, and we just, and, 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 and kind of like what you asked, it's, it is kind of stressful when, when you, through the years, you have the opportunity to photograph it and you don't get a chance to photograph it. It is, it, it's, it's rather sad. I'm sorry to hear about that. Cool. Do you consider a change direction of the piece? Uh, Kelly, can you say that one more time? Okay. I hear there's some noise in the background. I don't know if it comes from mine. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Uh, so, will you consider a change in your career or future direction of business? Oh, okay. Well, all right, what I consider. Um, the impact has not been that severe to me to you know, make a, a career change. Uh, it's uh, this, this work that I do is something that is extremely gratifying uh, and it's wonderful. Uh, it, it, it's, um, it, and, and because it's, it's so gratifying, I, I really enjoy uh, the opportunity to, to take photographs. And so, um, so I, 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 that would be pretty traumatizing to, uh, to, 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 to make that severe a change. I've just, um, uh, I, I am very confident that uh, things will, you know, that there, there is a new normal, but I think that things will kind of stabilize and I think things will, will be fine. Uh, you know, I hope, I pray that the, um, that they do find a vaccine, and that that will be able to uh, to continue to be uh, the, the the wonderful country that we that we live in, and that uh, I think Houston is a dynamic, wonderful place to live in. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's change gears a little bit. Um, do do you think the pandemic has affected you and the relationship? Oh. I mean, the relationship between you and your loved ones? Uh, yes, I, I think that my relationship with my loved ones uh, are, um, are, are, are even stronger. Uh, we, I, I also use technology. I, 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 like, I like to use FaceTime. And, and I am able to uh, talk with my grandchild, my granddaughter. And uh, my my son and I we we speak pretty regularly on FaceTime, and and my daughter, I get a chance to call her, and uh, she's working from home also, and she's wonderful, and 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 so, luckily, joyfully, I have a wonderful relationship with my children, and my and my daughter-in-law as well as my son-in-law, and. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we have a great relationship too. Okay. And, uh, and I have a wonderful relationship with my mom and she's, luckily she's, she's still living and uh, she's, she's, she's terrific. So uh, I, I'm kind of in a sandwich generation in that, you know, my, my mom's living my, and then my children. So I, 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 I still feel like I have a parenting role even though I, my, my children are adults, um, you know, it, it's, it's nice that they are, um, that they do uh, like to get my input on things, you, you know, when they uh, are, are making uh, important decisions in their life. Yeah, and is your mom staying with you or? Uh, my mom lives by herself and, and I have two other brothers and we all rotate and we make sure that she, has company and that she has a hot meal and she's you know she she's she's doing just fine okay great and what have you learned about yourself during this pandemic um i i learned that i need to be uh focused i need to be determined um i i i i learned to be more grateful uh, to have gratitude. I'm, 
uh, I'm very thankful that we have uh, wonderful leadership in uh, this country. And because uh, I think things really could have been worse. And, and so I, I appreciate our governor. Our, our governor wants to keep us uh, as safe as possible. Uh, we, and, then, and then our mayor wants us to mask up. And I, you know, I definitely have, uh, I'm not wearing one now because uh, I'm talking to you via uh, the computer. But you know, uh, when I'm here, when I'm interacting with clients, I, I do want to uh, keep socially distanced and, 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 and wear a mask. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, since the outbreak, we've seen lots of racist comments and even hate crimes against Asians. And I'm wondering, like, what do you think of this kind of sentiment? Uh, I have, I, I am very aware of it, uh, you know, because I guess the news has, has, has made me aware of it. Uh, I have not seen or participated in that type of uh, hate crime, uh, but I am very aware of it, and uh, I, I, I did share that with my children as well as my wife. That you know, uh, at, you know, at being Asian, we just need to be careful, and I think being careful um, is 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 one of the biggest things that we can do, and we are. Um, and, and and because we are um, hunkering down, I, I guess that's the term that that people are using. Uh, you know, staying home and, and not socializing a lot. Um, you know, I, I keep my visits to a minimum. Uh, uh, you know, when I need to go grocery shopping uh, and and doing running errands and taking care of my mom, uh, I, I'm 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 being careful. I'm being very, very careful, careful about that because it's very, it, it is very real. Yeah. I think the pandemic has amplified the racial conflicts in American society. Uh, you know, I have, I guess I've seen it, uh, uh, you know, back in the sixties, uh, uh, I, I was a youngster at the time, but uh, I was, you know, there were very tense racial times uh, at that particular era. And, um, and, you know, I think, I think every race has had some type of, um, conflict and uh, uh, you know I, I did not live through the Chinese Exclusion Act mm -hmm. that was enacted when my parents were uh, uh, in in China and when they made their way to America uh, you know the Chinese Exclusion Act was enacted and it was uh, it, it's it's the only you know the Chinese were the only race that were uh, that were affected by the Exclusion Act. You know there hasn't been a African uh, Exclusion Act or an Italian Exclusion Act or a Japanese Exclusion Act, but there was a Chinese Exclusion Act. We were uh, isolated and we were segregated, and uh, uh, but the Chinese worked through it and and then luckily that uh, exclusion act was repealed and so and that and that's a wonderful thing because that 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 was a very very terrible thing um but uh the government did recognize that it, it was a bad thing and and you know through the years um you know there have been things that have been terrible uh but uh, I, I, I guess I, I feel that the country, I think people in general have a good compass in their hearts and they, 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 they know the difference between good and bad. 
and you know, slavery was bad. It was terrible. It's a terrible thing. Uh, but uh, I, I'm I, I'm happy that, that that we don't have slavery anymore because that was very a, a very terrible thing. Do you think this pandemic has also revealed any social inequalities in American society? Um, I think people are pretty resilient. Um, you know, I, I, I really feel like uh, uh, has the pandemic revealed any inequalities um, I, I'll have to think about that and yeah okay no problem and so what do you think like Asian American community could do more to pro promote social or racial solidarity um, you know there's uh, you know there there's a wonderful organization that's called the um, Chinese American Citizens Alliance. And, and this organization was started many, many, many years ago. And, and it basically, when it was first started, it, it kind of was an organization that kind of helped overseas Chinese as they first migrated into America. There is a big, uh, uh, well, you, you know, it's a big cultural shock when someone from China comes here to America. And so the Chinese American Citizens Alliance tried to help Chinese as they made their way here. And that organization still is strong today um, in that it, some of the causes that uh, it will um, help would be things like hate crimes against Chinese. If they, uh, if someone in a leadership position says something in a negative way towards Chinese or Asians, uh, um, it's an organization that, that, that will represent Chinese as a whole and just say, you, you know, we weren't pleased with, with that statement that was made. So um, it's good that there are organizations like that. Yeah. Uh, have you been involved in that organization? Or? Uh, I'm a member. Yes, I'm a member. I, I haven't held, held a leadership position in that organization, but I, I know the leadership there. They're very fine people. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and I, I support that organization financially too. Mm, that's good to hear. And have you engaged in any like response to the outbreak after? Yeah. Of have I personally responded or, or? Uh, I mean in response to do anything in response to the outbreak I mean like community service or anything. right yes uh, I personally have, have not uh, uh, done any community service towards that. I, I do do community service. Uh, our church has a group of men that I'm involved with and it's called Men Serve. And once a quarter, uh, about 250 men will get together on a Saturday and we'll help the widow, widows of the church. And you know, sometimes there's just small things that need to be done like grass needs to be cut or bushes need to be trimmed or light bulbs and air conditioning filters need to be changed out that they can't reach um, or, or, or a bathroom needs to be painted. We get together and we, we, we go out and we help the widows of the church and, and they are very appreciative and, and, and the men that participate are, are more, uh, I feel like we get more of a blessing than they do. So uh, that's something that, that I like to participate in. That's wonderful. And 
what do you think like the future of Houston community would look like? Um, I think that uh, Kelly, how long have you been in Houston? Uh, only like four months. Oh, oh. I mean, like I, I, I didn't. I've been here at Rice for a year, but I. <laughs> Well, the reason why I was asking was because I, if you had been here for two years, then you lived through Hurricane Harvey. Uh, you weren't here yet. Okay. Well, Hurricane Harvey covered the city in water. I don't know if you saw pictures, but the, 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 the bayous, the streets, I mean, they, they had to have helicopters rescuing people. And when they rescued the people, they would put them, they would drop them down on the freeway because that was the point where there was no water. Um, it was devastating. And when you looked in, at all those pictures and saw how terrible and how devastating that was, uh, water just, it just rained nonstop. And there were high winds, things were damaged. I mean, it looked like, Houston looked like a war zone. It looked devastated. And, and we've come back. You know, we've come back in a, in a positive way. I mean, if you were to look, you would not believe how terrible uh, Houston was, was, was hit with Hurricane Harvey. So I, I feel like the same thing, that, that, that Houston is very resilient. We have people that will, uh, will work hard and, uh, and, and and, and truly the, the backbone of this country are small businesses like myself. And I think that as long as the small, and it's wonderful that, that the government has the PPP program to help, in, in, to help small businesses get back on their feet. And it's been a very positive thing. So uh, looking at that long-term basis, I think, we'll be, I think we'll be fine. Right now, it's, it's not good. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist. Okay. So I'm very optimistic about that. Yeah. So my last question is that if there are any positive lessons learned out of this pandemic, in your opinion, what are the important ones? Um, I, I think that... I, I'm not saying that we need to lower our expectations on success. But I think, you know, what I've learned is just to be happy in any circumstance because the uh, life is going to throw you curveballs all the time. And, and, and because this is a, such a terrible thing when we get out of it, we're going to be able to all rejoice and just be so much happier when this is behind us. And, uh, and I think that we can, I think, I think the first responders, the doctors, I think everybody can really learn from this. Uh, I, I really appreciate how everybody has, 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 has taken a very proactive uh, action towards this. And, um, and, 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 and we're, we're we're always gathering information all the time. And, and so we're learning all the time. Okay, okay, that's great. Um, yeah, I think these are all my questions for today. Is there anything else you'd like to add at the end? Well, uh, I, I certainly do appreciate the uh, opportunity to, to, I guess, to, to vent and, and, and share and, uh, and I, I think this is going to be really kind of exciting since, you know, there's going to be, I think, 100 participants in this. So you have a lot of, in, you know, a lot of inquiring to do. You're going to put a lot of time into it. And it's appreciated that, that uh, and, and I, I hope to, to, to participate in that. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you so much for today. Thank All you. Right. So All right, Kelly. Thank you. Bye.